Okay, so um, we're going to take a look today uh, with trigonometry of the plane to get started. So basically what we mean is doing trig on a graph is kind of the way you can think of it. So for the first example, I just want to illustrate one thing that c comes up in this question which is uh, very useful for you. And that's that um, uh, the key thing here is it says the unit circle. So you got to kind of get used to thinking when you hear unit circle, there's some connection. So what can you tell me about the unit circle? Radius one, yeah, keep going. What else do you know that's important about the unit circle? Circumference two pi, we use it for radians. Okay, what else? How is sine and cosine connected to the unit circle? Sines y, cosines x. So that's what you should be thinking about here is, you know, maybe not quite yet, but at some point you want to be comfortable when you hear unit circle to think this means cosine of an angle. This is the value for the sine of that angle. Okay? So if we know the point, we can plot this here. If I go over to x equals a half, it's going to be about, sorry, x equals negative a half. So this is roughly what the angle would look like. Something like this. And if we wanted to sketch its reference angle, here would be the reference angle. Okay. And we need to find the sine and cosine and tangent. So again, in this one, the question is actually quite simple if you know um, those connections. In this one, it says, what's the sine? Well, we just said the sine is going to be the y-coordinate, and the cosine is going to be the x-coordinate. So that should be a negative 0.5. Um, how would we find the tangent? Sure, Jackie. Y over x. Y over x or sine over cosine. So tangent, <laughs> bless you, is um, 0 0.866 over negative 0 0.5, so that's negative 1.732. Okay. So we didn't actually need to, uh, you know, the, knowing it's on the unit circle, it saves us a lot of work. Okay, we know some stuff about it already. Um, what if we need to find the angle to the nearest tenth of a degree? Okay, what I'd like us to do so we can discuss it is let's all try and find the angle. Um, well, first of all, how will we do that? Yeah, calculator. What's on the calculator that can help you find the angle? The, the uh, inverse, yeah, the negative. So let's use this one here. Let's use inverse sine. So let's go sine inverse of like 59.997 so well let's just call it 60 okay easy to work with 60 degrees does that look like the angle that we're talking about the red angle no. what does it look like the reference angle so here's one thing that happens sometimes to your calculator it doesn't always give you the number you expect for example there is also another place where the sine equals 0.866 over here that's why your calculator doesn't know which one you mean. So your calculator gave you back the reference angle, and it's your job to figure out that if this is 60 degrees, then the angle I'm actually looking for is the 120. Okay. So um, be careful. Your calculator has got to make sense when you get your answer. You may not get the answer that looks like your picture. You may have to adjust. Okay. So um, we're going to move off the unit circle now. And uh, we're going to talk about just doing general trigonometry onto a graph. So the first one, it says the angle's terminal arm contains the point 8, negative 15. So if I wanted to show you in a picture, you know, the, the English sounds complicated. Let's put it in a picture. Here's, say, positive 8. If this was positive 8, um, actually, if I make it to scale, it's probably more like this. And then this would be negative 15. So this would be the point... 
um, 8, negative 15. So basically what it says is there's an angle, and its terminal arm contains that point. Okay. So it would be a fairly large angle, I guess, at least around a quadrant 4. Okay. And it says, um, let's sketch the reference angle again. So the reference angle is still in here. And let's find the three ratios again. So it becomes tougher now that we don't have the unit circle to deal with. So we better at least start with a triangle. Can anyone think of how we can add a triangle into this picture somewhere? We need triangles to have opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse, so we can talk about sine, cosine, tangent. <coughs> you have an idea, Jackie? So if we made a line like this, like we used to do with the reference angle, let me make a better line here. Okay. Then there's this triangle now, and I can actually notice the reference angle is part of that triangle. Can we label any sides here? Does anybody know how the lengths? Triangle is no good to us unless we know the, the side lengths. Sure, Alice? Uh, the x is eight. Yeah, it tells me it's eight units to the right. What about this one here? Yeah, so if we end up calling this negative 15, this is the way I like to do it, um, what we're, we're saying is we're going down 15 to get to this point. I know it sounds weird that we're calling the triangle a negative length. But the other thing that's good about it is if I keep this negative sign in here, then the cast rule will sort itself out. If you call this positive 15, then when you find your answers, you will also need to apply a cast rule because all your pieces are positive. Does that make sense? If they're all positive, you need to double check quadrant four, some will be negative. By keeping it here, it'll do it automatically. So we only got one more side left. Um, what would be the missing side here? How, how big is this one? Sandy, did you get it? Uh, 17? Okay, so if that's length 17, then now I got the sides of the triangle. Here's the angle for the, the reference. It's easy to find the sine of theta. It's just going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. And this is what I mean by you don't need the cast rule. Sine should be negative in quadrant four. This answer here. It is negative. It's kept the negative sign in it. Okay. Um, if we wanted the cosine, should it be positive or negative? It should be positive in quadrant four. So let's check and see that it works. Adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 8 over 17. It is positive. Okay, and then finally, if we were to do this with the tangent, it would be opposite over adjacent. And again, we would expect the tangent to be negative, but we don't need to add the cast rule to this problem. Okay, any questions so far on how we dig up the ratios from a point? Good. Okay. okay. So these questions are identical. The only difference is they're sort of hidden. So I'll show you what I, how we uncover what's, what's supposed to be in there. A lot of times we just need a good picture because there's too much information. We want the picture to help us sort it out. So let's just start with a fourth quadrant angle, okay? So here's my picture. I don't even know if this is close to what the real angle would be, but let's call that a fourth quadrant angle. Then it says the angle has sine of that angle to be negative 7 over 25. Okay. How can we use that information? Anybody have any ideas? Take a break. Sure, Kathy. Oh. Yeah. Right, right. Okay, so, um, so you know, all that stuff, Kathy's right. What we what we're thinking of here is, again, we need a triangle in order to help us find those angles, and it actually tells us more than just you know that we need a triangle. It tells us the length is 25 for the hypotenuse, and it tells us the opposite side 
is 7. And we need to decide which one in that fraction is negative. And if you look at the picture, because I'm going down from the y-axis, this would be negative 7, right? So that's how I've got negative 7 over 25 for the sine ratio. Okay? And then she's right. If we reverse Pythagoras, that means we got 25 squared minus 7 squared. And if I take that square root, I get 24 for the other side length. Okay. So I can find the tangent fairly easily. That will be the opposite over the adjacent, which is negative 7 over 24. And I can find the cosine, which is 24 out of 25. Okay, so I'm going to have you try the next one and see how you do with it. And we'll catch up together. Okay, so this time we're talking about a third quadrant angle, so that's where we should start. Let's just put a third quadrant angle on our picture. Um, it tells me that the triangle, not on my picture yet, but I have to have a triangle in there for that sine ratio to work. So there's a triangle. It tells me that the opposite side is 21 and the adjacent is 29. And if I look at this, again, I'm below the y-axis, that should be a negative 29. Okay. So if I was to work this with Pythagoras backwards, I guess we call it, um, I end up here with a length of 20. Anything wrong with that? It should be negative 20 because I'm on the left side of the y-axis, right? So it should be a negative 20 to really capture the entire picture. Okay. So now I have all the pieces labeled. I can find the other ratios. The tangent of theta is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. And even though both are negative, that ends up making the tangent positive, which it should be in quadrant 3. So 21 over 20. And the cosine, that's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay. Now... Um, oops, sorry, I'm in your way. Now, I, I'm not sure what could be funner than picking all six trig ratios, but uh, that's just frankly boring. <laughs> let's, um, let's just do the three for sine, cosine, and tangent. But you are uh, going to have to be comfortable with doing the reciprocal ratios. So let's just see if you remember how this goes. Perhaps in this last question, let's say we were asked for the secant. What would the secant ratio be in this last question here? Yeah, it would be 29 over negative 20. It's the reciprocal of cosine. Okay, so if you can find the first three ratios, then, for example, over here, what if I was looking for the cosecant? What would I end up with? Yeah. So just the reciprocal of the sine ratio. So if you can find the first three, it's pretty easy to find the rest of the six. So let's just find the first three ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, whoops, for these uh, two questions.